Hey guys, it's Cass, and welcome back to another Minecraft Hardcore Season 2, Episode 6, where we start out mining because I felt like going after... I was going to say dripstone, but that's not the right word. <laughs> what is this block called? Deep Slate. <laughs> Oh goodness, I felt like going after the grueling task of mining Deep Slate was worth it because I was debating using it for a future build and I wish I would have kept the Deep Slate diamonds as Deep Slate and Silk Touch them. But you know, hopefully I can find some more just since those are supposedly be rare ores. But my lovely pillager friends all getting stuck in water um, and I do end up having them kill their captain because, as we know, right over the hill, over there, or behind the flowers, is where my village is. And I'm just not ready for a raid until I get, I guess, the fencing set up a little bit better. Kind of work that situation around. I know when I do do a raid there, they're going to mess up my crops, and I'm not excited about that. So I have them kill him and I get rid of them. But this whole episode is meant to be kind of focused on me clearing out this inside of this first mountain, I guess, closest to the village um, where I'm wanting to do my storage system. So that's kind of what you're seeing here is me digging it out and then I... I, my original plan wasn't to touch this mountain at all until I streamed, but I kind of did a decent amount of it beforehand and created this path that I absolutely didn't like, which you'll see. <laughs> um, but I end up changing it all after stream, but during stream, I do end up turning this into my kind of storage area. So yeah, you just see me digging it out trying to figure out how far I can go in each direction not really having a plan while digging this out but just knowing I wanted to turn it into I guess a storage area and I figured doing silk touch obviously to have the stone so I wouldn't have to smelt it if I ever wanted to turn it into brick also, I can sell stone to both my masons for emeralds, so it was a win-win-win. But I have six chests here that are all, you can see, they're a mess. Um, and this is where I start making this path. And it, like, looking back, I don't necessarily hate this, but I end up changing the entire thing again. And trying to use granite because I don't like granite, but I've never built with granite. So I tried but you'll I'll point out when you see it in here it's just it's not the look <laughs> i i have to find i feel like i need to force myself to find a build to use granite in just because i've never built with it and i don't like it um but you know i think everybody feels the same way as birch but i used birch here in a little bit you'll see but here i decided to make a dam because i didn't like how Originally, I was thinking a moat around this whole thing, um, since this little mountain is kind of separate on its own. But I felt like I'd build up a dam here, and I did the trick of putting the one layer down um, and then putting the water over it. It doesn't make everything a source block, yes, I know, but it fills everything in. And maybe I should have considered lighting it up while I was doing this, but I didn't. And you'll see how that comes back to bite me in a minute. But I'm unloading these buckets of cod because I bought these to level up, I think, a fisherman. Um, and my understanding is if you had something, they're all dying. I was trying to save them. <laughs> um, but my understanding is... If you bucket something, kind of like the axolotls, they won't despawn. But here I am digging it back, and since it was dark under there, all these zombies are turning into drowned. 
Um, yeah, I didn't put lights under there and it really only comes back to bite me right here. But the creeper didn't do any damage to me and it didn't do any damage to any of the surrounding areas. So I'm sure I would have been fine if I would have taken the full kind of force of it given my armor and everything but yeah i just i do bone mill the area i do um bring in some of the kelp block not blocks some of the kelp um and then here i'm making the stuff for just a really simple automatic bone mill farm where you put the seeds in the top um, and right here I was trying to lay out, or I was originally going to do that whole wall behind the wood as my axolotl tank. But you'll see here in a minute that I changed that up and I do end up removing these. I end up removing this entire floor and everything, but you'll see that as well. Um, but here's the auto bone mill farm, you know, the chest, the hopper, the composter, another hopper. And then the chests up top where I dump the seeds in right here and they just compost themselves and turn into bone mill. And then I had to make a ton of barrels. And that's still when the path is in an okay stage. It's just so interesting to look back at this knowing what it looks like now, how different everything is. But yeah, just barrels, and I thought I'd attach them that way so I didn't have just a bunch of black lines running everywhere. I'm trying to figure out what direction to put what and how and that whole situation. But I was like, I need something to decorate it. Obviously, bookshelves. Which I do end up sprucing up a bit more with moss that I'd find and then I decide to put I've wanted to use tough blocks you can't turn them into anything but I just think they're a cool textured block so I put that up top above all the barrels and then I make item frames and then I make glow item frames right here with the glow squid ink um, and then that's what I do and I display it on the tuff to show what that row of barrels has in it. So you could see, you know, here I've got cobblestone, stone, I think that's andesite. And just, that was tough. This is diorite here. And then here's where I've been finding my glow squid and my axolotls. Um, I found this in the first episode and here I decided to clear it out because... I mean, I feel like it's an obvious reason, but since there's nothing but stone on the bottom, and I wanted to start gathering these axolotls, which I end up getting a ton of them, but I just clear this out. If there's glow squid, I kill them where the axolotls will, and then I get the glow squid ink to make the glow item frames, and then I capture all the axolotls and all the buckets that I had that had the cod in them that I emptied out. So it's just nice how everything's kind of like helping other processes here. But yes, I close this up. I take a step back for a minute, let the glow squid and the axolotl spawn, and then I come back in. Uh, getting that little baby yellow one, which I name him Egg, you'll see in a minute, <laughs> was hard. Um, but... Yeah, I wish you could see the color of what they are while they're in the bucket. But yeah, I just close it in, come back after a couple minutes, and you see all these glow squid spawn. And there's a ton of axolotls in here that I take as well. And then here I'm figuring out who's who and what color and then naming them. So we have Cookie. I think this is Bubblegum, which is my favorite name. I was trying to come up with food things. Salmon, my partner named that one. Um, strawberries and cream. No, this is berries and cream. And then, yeah, I have to go strawberry because I'm like, what else can be pink? This is my yellow one, so he's egg. <laughs> and then this is where I decide I'm going to chop some of the barrels back because I knew I wanted to put stained glass somewhere. But this is where I was messing with the granite, trying to mess with the brick, the trap doors, like smooth diorite like ugh it was just a mess 
but this is where I open up the window and I loved it even more when I realized that I could see the bee and the flowers. And I'm like, okay, let's turn around. We'll open this up over here. And this gives me a view. I mean, hopefully I'll extend the village out to that area. So you can have kind of a better view, but you see half the village through that. And then the hill. And then this is where I decide, okay, I'm going to do my axolotl tank here. And I was debating carrying it from like the top of the mountain down and just allowing them to swim all the way through, which I'm probably still going to do. I haven't exactly decided, but for right now, it's just in the floor level. But taking a pit stop break, because I already spoiled it, I was going out to get sand to make more um, glass. But I had found this full ship, which at some point, yes, I am going to unbury this and utilize it for something in some build. But I found moss block, you guys. And I know I already spoiled that a couple minutes ago saying that, but I was so excited about it. Um, but yeah, we find a buried treasure map, but it does just lead me to a treasure. Even though I broke the chest, which I thought breaking the chests allowed a new map to reset to a different area, but clearly that may not be the case. Again, I've never validated that. It's just something I've always heard, but over excited about my moss block. And so I'm like, I'm going to take it up here and just spread moss. <laughs> I've... I'm a little conflicted still trying to figure out what I want the style of the village to be when I'm redoing it. And I just feel like I have to go moss and deep slate. Like they just look so good together. So I'm up in the air about what I'm going to make the watchtower. I kind of have an idea and it's real cutesy to fit in theme with my bigger animals. But we'll see. But here's everything I did on the stream. So I took... Dark oak, oak. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> birch, birch, oak, dark oak. I don't know. I don't know why I'm blinking so hard on what the other log is that I'm using. Dark oak, spruce. There you go. Dark oak, spruce, oak, and then birch. And then I'm stripping them and I'm making a pattern. And this just kind of came to me somehow. I was putting them down and I was like, what do these look like stripped? Oh, and it was because I accidentally stripped a piece of oak. And I was like, that is so interesting. I've never done anything with stripped wood before. So yeah, I absolutely love this floor. And I'm just extending the barrels, extending the tuff, kind of repeating the whole process of getting the glow squid ink and making the item frames and i saw a wandering trader and i get a few acacia saplings from him and some coral block and i think i even do end up buying the um buckets of tropical fish which i wish i maybe would have bought more just to breed my axolotls but i was asking one of my viewers on the live stream if I should kill him and he said to do whatever I wanted so you know he's already gone but this is where I was messing with the glass paint originally I had done white glass panes with like one or two sprinkled colored there here and there but I agreed that it looks better in my opinion um was it all colored like that so and then I'm down underneath that area this is the axolotl tank kind of here the empty space but i'm digging out this whole bottom layer as well to extend the storage with more random items i guess um so this isn't fully done under here but i do you know was just working on this on the stream and trying to raise that level to the bottom of the wood and kind of just spreading that out and trying to figure out how I'm going to make this axolotl. And I was talking here about like bringing glass panes down, which is what you see me doing. But just a spoiler, glass pane does not keep water in, which is so weird. So this was all for naught anyway. I have to 
end up removing it and making it glass blocks because the glass pane allows water to go through it, which is frustrating. But I decide this, the, the brown is a lot with the barrels and I knew I wanted to spread out the moss carpet, which I think not only helps the vibe, the only thing this room is missing is glow berries now. So hopefully I can find a mine shaft with those soon. But here's where I'm like, I hate everything about this path. I was just trying to love it, to use different blocks. But I got the idea from one of the live streamers to extend that pattern out, which I do. And then I add moss blocks down the side. And then I do the cobblestone and mossy cobble walls and add the lanterns on that way. And I do extend out the um, moss carpet kind of on the path as well. And I love it. So I think that's going to kind of be my overall path texture moving forward with any builds because I just love it so much. I'm so happy with it. And here you see me. Um, this is where I was clearing out the ceiling to add moss in and I said I was going to do the ceiling in moss. Um, as you can see how it's plant like coming out here of doing moss and leaves and I add lanterns around um, and I also, uh, you could place moss on torches, so under the ground where it's dark, which is what I'm kind of looking around here, you are able to dig down, put a torch as you see, and then a moss carpet over it, which is awesome to still light up the space. And yeah, I just keep expanding everything out. And here is where you see <laughs> the fact that water won't stay contained in them and like at first I couldn't understand I was like why is it is there a hole somewhere no there's not a hole just glass panes you can't like it just won't with water so as you see I have to take it all down but that's okay I can turn around and sell it for emeralds to the cartographer so I guess it's not really a loss just some wasted time but in the whole scheme of everything where you spend the entire time grinding, is it really a loss of time? I don't know. <laughs> it all takes time. But here I'm like, okay, we'll do the glass blocks. And this is where I am filling it up. And since I have the kelp, I do turn everything. I moved kelp to the swamp biome by my house. And this is where I'm doing the kelp up to make everything a source block which is a fantastic tri trick, as I say trip, trick. And this is where I start transforming it into the axolotl environment bone milling, which I thought you could only do on dirt, but I guess if it's in water, it does it on any texture of a floor, I guess. Um, but I add in the coral block I bought from the wandering trader and some moss blocks and some mossy cobblestone, which is where I add the um lanterns at but this is where i bring the axolotls in and i grab the two buckets of tropical fish so i can breed them because i didn't have a cyan one i had about six or seven i have about six or seven pink ones in there um, obviously egg and then the brown one cookie and then I do get another brown one but I also eventually get a cyan one in here right here <laughs> and I was like no I need you but I get you know all of these guys name them take them back just I do think I might extend the thing though I wish I would have kept it as Cheyenne as S-H-Y-A-N, but it was C-H-Y-A-N, I guess. For some reason, I changed it to that. And then this brown one is Chaco Yum. <laughs> this yellow one is Lemon. I can't remember what I named this pink one. Smoochy, because I was like, I don't have any other pink food names. And I don't know why I went food-based, but... There's their tanks so far. Currently, I do have glass over the top of it. Um, but like I said, I might extend it all the way up to the top of the mountain just to give them more space to swim because I'm going to keep 
breeding them, but I was running over here explaining I'm going to cut this down, make a castle on there, going through the path, and then the tank. This is the portion of my storage area done so far, and I love it so much. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next hardcore video stream on Mondays.